Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to be talking SQL Server on Linux. Yes, that's right, Microsoft SQL Server 2019 for Linux. I've done a video in the past on this. Uh, when I used uh, Ubuntu 2004 for SQL Server 2019, it was in an unsupported release schedule at the time. So we're going to revisit that video in our next video now, since SQL Server 2019 is supported officially in Ubuntu 2004. So stay tuned for our next video for that. But this video is all about why you should be using Linux for your host for SQL Server. Let's get started. All right. Welcome back. So top three reasons why you should be running SQL Server on Linux. Number one, there's no reason not to. SQL Server for Linux is fully supported by Microsoft. So basically that just means the stamp is there. They support it just as much as running it on Windows. So that's your number one reason is it's supported. <laughs> all right. So performance wise, everything should be great. All that good stuff. So there's no, no reason from that standpoint. Now, feature wise, for all intents and purposes, there's no differences in features. So if you're running SQL Server on Linux versus SQL Server on Windows, Everything you can do on the Windows box, you can do on the Linux box. Now, there are, of course, maybe a little bit of differences, and we'll sh I'll show you how to check those in just a minute. We'll come back to that, all right? Number three, and, and this is a big one, cost. So if you run Linux SQL Server on an Ubuntu or a SUSE or a Red Hat, you can do it for free, right? So you basically, you don't have the cost of the operating system involved there. You, you, the minimum you can get into a SQL server in a Windows server is, you know, a, several hundred dollars to buy the minimum license, the cost for licensing a Linux server, zero, the big goose egg. And that's a big, big, big reason, especially if you're wanting to spin up a Linux, uh, a, a SQL Server Express, and you you need to keep your costs down. Maybe it's for development, maybe it's for uh, uh, pre-production um, and everything. So you can do that for free uh, by, you know, choosing the Express license and choosing uh, Ubuntu. And so there's no cost there. <clears throat> so cost, that's the big thing. Okay, so, any other benefits? Well, yes. If you're a Linux admin and you're used to running Linux and you're comfortable in Linux, Ubuntu, or Red Hat, or, or SUSE, then then it's just right up your wheelhouse. It's it's not much different than managing a MySQL instance. Um, so that is a big thing, and you can push that out in containers. So you can use a, a Linux container docker and push out a sql server instance and manage it like that so that's it's ease and flexibility is your other reason so many many years people have chose mysql progress uh things like that because i can you can run it on linux well now there's no reason for you not to use choose linux for your sql server now that being said let's go ahead and take a look at this <clears throat> okay, so here's my desktop. Microsoft documentation on Linux is pretty great. Um, I did a video a while back on installing SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu 2004. And at the time, like I said, it was not fully supported yet. It was fully supported on 1804. So, um, but now that's changed. You can... Uh, Microsoft has finished making SQL Server ready for 2004. Now, I, I'm talking a lot of Ubuntu, and that's because that's kind of my 
distro of choice when it comes to to, to Linux. Uh, I I choose Ubuntu and Debian a lot. Um, I used to use a lot of um, CentOS, uh, but if you're familiar with what's going on with CentOS and the changes there, then you know you might want to steer away from that for just a little bit while they get that figured out, or just use the actual Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which for small installations is free. So take a look at the documentation on that. So, but what I want to do, and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger here, is talk to you about the Microsoft documentation. So you can just simply Google or Bing, or whatever your DuckDuckGo, my preferred search engine, uh, search for SQL Server on Linux. When you get to the Microsoft documentations, you'll see it right here. Now, one of the things I want to do is up here, you can choose 2019 uh, or 2017. So obviously, I'm going to push you towards the 2019 version. And that's because it's the latest and greatest and so on and so forth. And check this out. All supported versions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Microsoft's documentation is pretty wonderful. So if you want to go down here and just scroll down and look at this, if you're ready to install on Red Hat, click here, SUSE, Ubuntu, Docker, and even uh, pushing down to, to Azure. Um, so pay attention to the notes here. There are different things that are there. I'm going to click on the Ubuntu one real quick. And this is the quick start for Ubuntu. Now, I have a, uh, a an article on GitHub that, that has my notes on this. And I'll have notes in my, my next video for when, when we go through this as uh, uh, setting it up, my revisiting of the 2004. But I just want to go through this documentation real quick. Go through here, follow this, and you should come up with a fully functional SQL Server database. And, but what I wanted to point out to you here is down at the bottom, recommended content. Guidances, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, um, and all these things, See, troubleshooting guides. So check these out if you're interested in what's going on. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to point out to you is, let me find it real quick. Before you do your install, I would recommend going and taking, checking out the release notes section of SQL Server. And then scrolling all the way down to the bottom where they're gonna go known issues. So this is important if you want to have not run into gotchas, okay? The known issues and resolutions. So first off, let's just take a look at those real quick. First one here, is about host name characters. Um, SQL Server is installed needs to be 15 characters or less so of the host name. So just keep that in mind when you're creating your, your hosts is that, that there's a, a character limit. And obviously see there's a resolution for it. If you actually go in there, you can just shorten the amount of characters. Um, there's a an issue with time. So if you have your, you set your time backwards, it's going to cause you issue. Just scroll through this list. I'm not going to go every, over every single one of them. This is the general. So you've got the general one and then you've got databases. And so you can go through here and see if any of these things apply to your situation. And if they do, um, many of these have, like I said, Many of them have resolutions and how to how to get past them. Some of them don't, um, but that just means that, that you you may or may not be able to to use it in your particular case. Some of them are Linux distro uh, specific. Like I think SUSE has a couple issues if you go through here. Just like I said, just go through these. Check them. They they've got them broken down into sections: general, database networking, there's one about NFS, localization, uh, full text search, uh, SQL Server integrated services, um, the SQL Server management studio, and then next step. So go through and read those and see if you, if you 
your situation fits any of these categories. Once you've got past that, and if you notice, that's not a whole lot of issues. Probably if you go through and you look at the the Windows side of, of it, as far as known issues, you're going to have a list that's going to be comparable. So this is not really specific to being the fact that it's Linux. Um, <clears throat> but Microsoft's documentation is great. So you can go to the FAQs. And so if you want to go through, and these FAQs are specific to Linux. So you can go through these FAQs and take a look and see if there's some instances on there. Um, it talks about licensing and how that works and all that stuff. So one of the things you should know, and I want to point out to you is that the paid versions are work too. You're not limited to just using the uh, SQL Server Express version on, on Linux. The enterprise core, the enterprise, the standard, the web uh, developer, all that works on this. So just keep that in mind. And um, when you go through and you do your installation, you will see that this dialog box pop up in here, uh, as you can see. And that, that lets you pick which version of, of SQL Server that you're going to install. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, there's lots of things in the FAQs, uh, the quick starts. Um, you know, here's a quick start for Red Hat. Uh, one here for SUSE, another one here for Ubuntu, and another one here for Docker, Docker and Bash, PowerShell, and C C C Command Line CMD that you can do. Um, anyway, so also there are other tutorials in this. Microsoft's a really good documentation when it comes to this stuff. New SQL Server docs. Um, you. There's documentation on how to upgrade an existing Linux installation that you have. There's even documentation on migrating from Windows to Linux and how to back up and do a restore. There's documentation on upgrading. So, yeah, all right. So that is it. So. I just wanted to broaden up the reasons why you should use Linux as your SQL Server host. Great documentation, very little reasons to not choose it. If you're a Linux admin, then SQL Server on Linux is a great choice for you. I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com. See you next week.